Welcome to PSA Squash Extra, where we bring you the latest highlights, news and features from inside the PSA World Tour. It was all about Egypt in April as the PSA World Tour headed to the Red Sea Resort of Elguna for the 2017 Elguna Men's Open and the Arascom Women's World Championship. Starting off the men's event, there were huge upsets from the off, with Ferris Dasuki stunning Nick Matthew in round one and Diego Elias eliminating Ali Farag. The upsets continued in the second round with Paul Cole eliminating James Woolstrop before Marwan El Shabagi recorded a second straight win over elder brother Mohammed in a huge last eight result. And after rain forced play to move indoors, Dasuki made it to the semi-finals in a feisty affair with Elias, with harsh words exchanged between the pair. Then it was Kareem Abdelgawad's time to shine as his victory to reach the final granted him the world number one ranking this month. The former world number one Gregory Gaultier was full of praise for his successor. Uh, Karim, uh, yeah, obviously uh, took the number one spot uh, yesterday by uh, winning against Fares in the semi-final. So first of all, uh, congratulations to him. You know, it's a great achievement, and I remember my first time in November 2009. You know, <clears throat> when uh, this happens, so it's uh, always a, a great feeling, a lot of emotions. So I'm really happy for him, and I knew he, he would become number one after a successful. Uh, first part of the season he had, uh, be becoming world champion and winning so many events. So, and he was the player on uh, top form and uh, fully deserved it. But uh, I came back strong this, uh, this year. Not even Gouad though could stop the all-conquering French general. Gaultier had won the Swedish Open, Windy City Open and British Open before Elguna and made it four in a row with a sensational week on the coast. While Gaultier enjoyed his first ever tournament success in Egypt, there was home delight in the Women's World Championship as Norel Shabini successfully defended her title. Shabini hadn't won a major title since becoming the youngest ever world champion last year, but she played with supreme confidence to blast through the field. After seeing Renima Wilili dispatch first Laura Mazzaro and then Camille Cern to reach the final, Shabini looked up against it. But in the final, she put together a virtuoso performance to keep her hands on the trophy. We caught up with a two-time world champion earlier in the season. My name is Noura Sherbini. I'm the world number one. And last year in Dubai, I reached the semi-finals. I lost out in the semi-finals to Laura Massaro. I'm Shabana and Nicole David. Like these two are, I think, like the legends in our sport. I'm really proud that I uh, won the World Championship this year and, uh, and hopefully I can do it again. Well, me playing squash makes me happiest. <laughs> chicken, I always eat chicken anywhere and everywhere. Yes, I love chicken. <laughs> Yeah, Dubai was, was really amazing last, uh, last year. We, we were really looking forward to go there and we really had a lot of fun. It really meant a lot to me to be one of the best eight players in the world to go and compete there. Well, it's, it's really hard to say it now. It's, it's really difficult. Our tour is getting harder and like everyone can beat anyone. Like the really top ten is very hard and change every month. PSA World Tour pros took some time out during the tournaments in Alguna to lend their support to the United Nations International Day of Sport for Development and Peace. The players rallied around the symbol of a white card, a sign for the sport's commitment to peace efforts worldwide. Squash does break down barriers. It's like all sports. It's a universal sport and uh, it's played by all over the world. And the squash community is such a great community. We are joined, united by competing with one another and I think that shows that you know we all get along well and we just l love what we do with this passion that we have for just this one sport. I think squash is an instrument of peace because uh, you know you get uh, 
a lot of different players from different countries, different languages, different culture. No one cares about where, where, where is your background, no one cares where you come from. We all get together try to compete against each other in uh, tough and fair battles and uh, just the way we uh, connect, speak and uh, it just uh, it makes it, uh, it always, uh, I think uh, sport inspires people, squash inspires people and uh, it always um, bring the best of everyone for uh, in the sport and uh, I think it's always a great sport. Squash is a great example of uh, showing uh, peace around the whole world and, uh, and every sport really and uh, I just uh, I think it's an amazing sport and uh, I think it uh, shows great signs of peace for sure. With the conclusion of the action in Egypt, the road to Dubai standings are now complete. The big news is that Rami Ashour has secured his place amongst the world top eight to compete at the tournament at Dubai Opera this June. Ashour's victory at the Hong Kong Open in August was enough to keep him ahead of Farag and Asuki in the men's standings. The women's places were wrapped up earlier in the year, but Alison Walters will be replacing the injured Amanda Sobi in the event. With the players set, it was also time to draw the winner of our Road to Dubai competition. From hundreds of entries, our lucky winner was Samantha Ward. Okay, it's Lee Beach calling from the Professional Squash Association. Um, Yes, um, a few months ago you entered a competition. Yeah. Why do you know what I'm going to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you have won the competition. Oh my god. Yeah, so you have won uh, a trip to Dubai, uh, three nights accommodation, and tickets to the squash. <laughs> if you were unlucky to miss out, remember you can buy tickets now or catch all the action on Squash TV in June. Elsewhere on the tour, there were big wins for Neela Gillis and Declan James at the Irish Open. Mexican duo Edgo Zayas and Jesus Camacho both triumphed with unseeded Camacho stunning Piedro Shirtman in the Madison Open final. Kareem Abdul Gawab pressed on from his runner-up finish in Egypt to claim victory at the Hukai Fit Houston Open. In the women's standings, Noor El Shabini stays on top, but it's Renim El Wilili who now moves into second position with Sarah Jane Perry also moving up inside the top 10. James Wallstrop moves up one place to number six. Mohamed Abouelgar moves up to number 16, a career high ranking for him after some impressive results, while former world junior champion Diogo Alias makes his first ever appearance inside the world's top 20. And finally, courtesy of his victory over Ferez Dasuki in the semi-finals of the El Guna International and title win at the Houston Open, Kareem abdul Gawad has taken over the world number one spot in the men's rankings. Our friends at Squash Skills took a look at the range of shots in Gawad's arsenal which have fired him up to the top spot. In this clip we've got a fantastic example of Kareem Gawad going into the front corner and showing Nick that he's got options to either hit the ball hard to the back or fire in the quick trickle boast into the front corner. So you see him do it on the backhand where he goes in with an aggressive swing, looking like he's gonna hit the ball hard, and then stuns the ball, cuts across it, really short follow through. Nick defends it into the front forehand. Again, he goes into an attacking swing, aggressive, looking like he's gonna hit the ball hard to the back, plays a good little trickle boast. Once again, Nick plays a weak ball. This time, Kareem goes in very similar setup, little head fake and whips the ball back across Nick with that pace so it's a great example of using shots in pairs coupling up the shots to show you've got options to get your opponent rocking and rolling if you watch those trickle bows you'll see how deep Nick's tee position is because he thinks the deep ball is coming off the hard fast swing and then when he does eventually play the long ball you'll notice how Nick's tee position is slightly higher than it was on the two previous shots exposing that space in the back corner it's a really really clever play from Kareem Goward 
After successfully defending her World Championship crown, Norel Shabini was named Women's Player of the Month for April. And the men's award stayed in the family as Mohamed El Shabini, a cousin of Noor, took the honours after winning back-to-back -back titles at the Assault and Baldwin Parkview Open and the West Rand Open, his first ever PSA titles. Those victories take the 24-year-old up 200 places on the world rankings. Elsewhere, the March Shot of the Month contest was one of the most competitive ever seen. There were some outrageous skills on show, but it was Kareem Abdulgawad's slick reverse that took the honours, just ahead of Sarah Jane Perry and Ferez Dasuki. The biggest season in squash TV history continues in May as we bring the action from two major events. First up, it's the Grasshopper Cup in Zurich, where Gawad, Gaultier, El Shabagi and Matthew headline a mouth-watering 16-man draw. Check it out from May the 3rd to the 7th. Then it's stateside for the 2017 Pacific Market International Bellevue Squash Classic. This is the most lucrative 16-man draw ever with a whopping 150,000 US dollars up for grabs. We'll be live from May 16th to the 20th. To get the best highlights and to make sure you don't miss any of the action, subscribe to Squash TV on YouTube now. Amazing. Samantha, I was ringing to tell you that you just won a trip to Dubai. Plus, you're not answering the phone.